Mutations webheads. Thanks for swinging by and checking out my channel. Today we're going to be making a Spider-Man face mask. Now, this one I did not make. I bought this from Zentai Zone, but we are going to be making ours from scratch in true Peter Parker Spider-Man style using nothing more than a free online sewing pattern, some red spandex, and a few other easily obtainable items you probably have lying around the house. So without further ado, let's get started. QB roll! All right, activate your search engine of choice and search Spider-Man mask pattern template. Scroll through the images until you get to a picture that looks like the death metal butterfly and a couple of deformed circus peanuts. Save that image to your hard drive. Open this up in paint. You're gonna increase the screen resolution of the image to approximately 200%. All head sizes are different, but 200% seems to be about the magic number. Spandex is very stretchy and forgiving, so 200% ratio on that should be just fine for most heads. Uh, if you look at the print preview window, you can see how many pages it will print out on. It looks like about eight pages. Print your file. Also printing it in black and white seems to make it a little easier to see where the lines are since this pattern was drawn red on red. You'll get one or two pages without any useful information on them. Save those, draw on the back of them, use them for scrap paper for your sweet Spider-Man designs. All right, you're gonna lay out your pattern. You can kind of see it takes shape there and then you're gonna cut it out. Make sure that you pay attention to these little tiny bits that may print on one piece of paper in a corner. They're kind of small, but they are important, so just make sure that you get all those little triangles and little bits and attach them where they go. There's another little bit there. A couple little bits here. Yes, don't forget those. All right, I've taped it all together. And I taped it all together just to give you guys an idea of what the whole thing is gonna look like and how it goes together when you sew it. I found that helpful. Maybe you will too. This is a totally optional step, but I decided to trace my pattern out on a blank sheet of large paper. I wanted the pattern that I printed out to remain sort of a master file. I'm gonna be sticking a lot of pins in this. It's gonna get a lot of use and abuse. I just figured it'd be easier to keep the uh, printed pattern as the master and then just print the secondary throwaway patterns out on sheets of paper. Cut that out. And again, this step is totally optional. You could just use the printed pattern as your pattern. All right, lay your pattern out on your red spandex and pin it down so it doesn't move around on the fabric. Cut your pattern out. Pin your fabric to your red spandex and trace your outline. Make sure to leave about a half inch or so of seam allowance on the sides and then cut out your pattern. Spandex is a bit hard to cut, so make sure that you have really good fabric scissors.
unpin your pattern from the fabric. ready to start sewing. This is the first time I've used a sewing machine in about 20 years and I kind of suck at it but uh, it worked out okay. I just wanted to cut in for a second and say that I do realize that some people don't own sewing machines or don't know how to sew using a sewing machine. If you don't have a sewing machine or you don't want to use a sewing machine you could absolutely sew this mask by hand. Likewise, if you don't have any sewing skills, you could buy some Gorilla Glue and glue the seams of this mask together using Gorilla Glue. I have not done that personally, so I can't vouch. I do know folks who have, so there are options here if you want to make a Spider-Man mask at home and don't have the sewing skills to go along with it. If you uh, need to do it that way, all is not lost. You can still make your mask. All right, back to the video. <laughs> I'm lazy and didn't feel like re-threading my bobbin with red thread, so I just used the blue thread that was in there. Uh, it didn't show. You should probably use the same color thread as your mask, but I didn't do that. Alright, so the mask is finished. I haven't glued the webs on yet. I'll probably do that in a part two video. Before I show this to you, I just want to say it's been about 20 years since I've sewn anything on a sewing machine. The seams on this thing are not pretty. So that's the inside of the mask. You can see my janky janky seams. But uh, that part's not going to show, and it doesn't matter. And it's, uh, it's an indicator of how forgiving this pattern is, because I, I screwed this up a few times. Um, I had a few holes I had to go back over. So that's what it looks like from the outside. I cut some eye holes in it. And uh, I will put this thing on so you can see. And I have a lot of crooked seams and a lot of screwy areas, but it still looks good. There's the mask, the head part goes there, and then there's another bump right there for the back of the head. And then that's the chin. And uh, there's a couple of areas where you can see the ink marks from where I marked the lines on the inside. I kind of, and they ended up on the outside a little bit. But it's okay, you know why? Because in the part two video, we're gonna glue all the webs on. And the cool thing about this mask pattern is all of the seam lines line up with where webs will eventually be. So I'm gonna be drawing webs on this thing with probably a pen. And then I'm gonna go over it maybe with puffy paint. And, uh, That'll actually hide right exactly where the seams are. The seam's gonna go like that, down the neck, and it's gonna go right down the middle of there, and there's gonna be another one on the side part where that side seam is going around the back. It's a great pattern because it does hide all of the uh, flaws that you might have if you're like me and kind of screwed up a lot of the seam lines, you know. Um, let's try it with a face shell on. If you wanted to do another character like Deadpool, this would be a really great mask for Deadpool as well. Uh, hang on. All right, we're gonna try it with my Iron Spider face shell that I made. And incidentally, this is the red spandex left over from the homemade Tobey Maguire suit that I made back in 2002. I still had a bunch of it left and I found it in a file cabinet. So I used that. <laughs> And I will probably at some point fix that neck seam because uh, I kind of just left that loose. When you wear a spider suit, you have the turtleneck that comes up and the mask gets tucked under that anyway, so it doesn't show. So I could probably just leave that loose, but I, I probably will seam that under at some point. It doesn't matter too much. I got a little janky bump right there. I could probably sew the inside of that and get that out. All right, so there it is with the face shell. Put on the lenses. Hey, there we go. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Came out pretty good. I think I could do better on my second attempt. But anyway, that's how you make a Spider-Man face mask from scratch. All right. Hey, you can do it too. If I can do it, you can do it. Believe me. I have no idea what I'm doing. 
So if it came out this good with me screwing up this bad, you guys could do this no problem. No problem at all. Well, anyway. All right, guys. Well, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more cosplay videos like this one, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, flip that like button. Thanks for watching, guys.